Hello and welcome once again to Straight Bat, my weekly blog that begins a new year with a prayer for India. That's right, after a traumatic and turbulent 2020, it's time to look forward to a new year with a sense of hope. And since Rabindranath Tagore is being rediscovered by our netas ahead of this year's Bengal elections, this is a prayer for India in 2021 that draws inspiration from the great poet laureate. Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where an Indian identity is determined by a sense of citizenship, not divided by the narrow domestic walls of caste, region or religion where our netas realize that true secularism demands that no state authority will promote or discriminate against any religion, where equal respect for all faiths must be the basis of our constitutional secularism, where an interfaith marriage won't be demonized as love jihad, where a consenting adult couple will not have to prove their love before a district magistrate or a local police officer in India's most populous state, or else face the prospect of being sent to jail. Where eating beef isn't crime in one state, while in a neighboring state it is essential diet. Where the state must stay out of the private lives of our citizens, what we eat, how we dress, who we love, Indeed, what religion we choose to embrace, these are part of our individual freedoms. Where agitating farmers aren't tear-gassed or barricaded in the winter freeze. Where a farmer isn't looked at with suspicion because he wants to be heard. Or indeed, when a turban Sikh isn't branded a Khalistani but is seen as a Kisan Putra above all else. Where Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan is not an empty slogan to be recited by our politicians, but where the Jawan on the border is better equipped to face the winter months and the Kisan in the fields is provided greater income security. Where crucial laws are passed by consultation and not by diktat, where key stakeholders are involved and are a part of plea legislative discussion where dissent isn't criminalized, where protesting students, academics and human rights activists must be engaged with and not thrown into jail and called anti-nationals and arrested under non-bailable anti-terror laws, where handing out patriotism certificates is not the business of the Indian state, where a corona vaccine will be made available to those who are most at risk and not those who wear their BVIP badges on their sleeve. Where a vaccine is not about nationalism, but is about public health above all else. Where no one will label a community as corona carriers simply to cater to rank prejudice. Where private healthcare recognizes the difference between profits and profiteering. Where more budgetary resources are spent on building top class primary health centers and schools instead of grand statues and monuments. Where it shouldn't have taken a pandemic to remind us of the plight of the urban poor. Where no one has to ever again walk hundreds of kilometers from urban shanties to their villages only because a national lockdown has been imposed with just four hours notice. Where the poor and the marginalized must not be abandoned so cruelly even as the middle class and the elites live in the comfort of their gated colonies and high-rise apartments. Where greater caring and compassion drives us to build a more inclusive society rather than one which privileges only a few. Where a PM Cares Fund cannot be a body owned and controlled by the government of India but then also not come under the right to information laws because it is deemed to receive private funds. That as taxpayers, we have a right to know where and how our monies are being spent by the government. Where election funding too is made more transparent. Where the information commission doesn't turn around and say there is no public interest in revealing the details of political donations under an opaque electoral bond scheme. Where before we spend public money on refurbishing our parliament, we first must restore the collective spirit of our parliamentary democracy. 
where democracy isn't about the supremacy of one leader, one nation, but actually encourages the decentralization of the power structure, where political parties aren't a family inheritance, but are built on merit and not lineage, where a robust democracy isn't just about winning elections, but ensuring a level playing field for all those who contest elections, where money power isn't used brazenly for buying MPs and MLAs and subverting a mandate, where state enforcement agencies don't become weapons of threat and intimidation of political opponents, where institutions are not made subservient to an individual or an ideology, where the spine of a bureaucrat matters more than proximity to power. Where a subcontinental sized country like India cannot be run from an ubiquitous high command sitting in Delhi alone, but it truly must embrace the spirit of federalism. Where a state cannot be downsized overnight to a union territory by a firman, as happened in the case of Jammu and Kashmir. Where a governor of a state must owe allegiance to the constitution and not to a political party. Where is this happening in Bengal at the moment? A conflict between the Raj Bhavan and an elected chief minister is dangerous and avoidable. Where as in Maharashtra, the governor cannot try and become a parallel center for political activity. Where the promise of free markets doesn't become the reality of market monopolies. Where the license permit Raj of a previous era doesn't become the patron crony rule of the present. Where businesses are built through innovation and enterprise and not by stealth and skullduggery. Where the vast informal sector is boosted and job creating industries are incentivized. Where growth figures aren't fudged and image management matters less than pure hard facts. Where judges recognize that notions of personal liberty cannot be selective. It cannot be that an octogenarian activist must struggle for weeks to get a straw sipper in jail while politically influential individuals are granted instant immunity from prosecution and arrest. Where judges eschew all post retirement benefits and where criticizing the judiciary isn't seen as criminal contempt. Where habeas corpus petitions are heard with urgency rather than allegedly contemptuous tweets of a stand-up comedian. Where an actor's suicide doesn't become a national soap opera while a farmer's suicide is reduced to a mere statistic. Where the news media isn't a lapdog but a watchdog. Where the duty of TV news networks is to inform, not to incite. Where news matters more than noise, where sense goes over sensation. Where TRPs must stand for television respect points and not a crude attempt to get eyeballs at all costs. Where social media platforms can't get away with allowing fake news and hate speech on their sites. Where simply a new India cannot be built, my friends, by abandoning the core values of our founding fathers. Into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. What can I say? Happy New Year, Happy News Year. Namaskar. This was The Straight Back.